live from the WesternUnion.com VIP Lounge. All right, welcome. Uh, Sandy from Marcus and Sandy here, and I'm sitting with the very, very lovely Mary Lambert. Hi. I have to tell you, before you came in today, uh, the staff was like, Sandy, do you want a donut? Mary brought them. I'm like, what? You came here for donuts for us. Donuts for all. Donuts for all. That's my slogan. <laughs> Let's make that a Friday hashtag. That's like, you know, if people are, are very into their humanitarian causes, and I really would just like to stand firm with donuts for all. No, keep it real. Keep it real, Mary. We can all agree on that. No, so I'm excited to talk to you, especially today, because today I feel like it's your unofficial birthday. Yes. It feels Does it like feel that. like your yes, birthday today? Yes, because it feels like I'm having a baby. Yes. My baby's born. Your baby is here. It's yes. called Hang Out With You. That's the new single. Mm -hmm. And I was reading your Facebook post about it and I just I adored everything you wrote because I know this process for you it's like a freedom thing right absolutely how how has this come about I mean it's so liberating so I mean I'm independent now mm -hmm. and uh, over the last two years I've been writing a lot and I've been composing a lot my background's actually in classical composition so I've been doing a lot of classical work and some fashion stuff kind of whatever I wanted to do and right. then um, and then I was getting pressure from you know from my team and the label of like we got to come up with the hit we got to get the hit and I was like that drives me crazy by the I way mean, but it's I, I get it like right. he, you know it, it makes sense it's part it's part for the course in the industry but I was just like I remember like looking at my girlfriend who's Michelle Shamuel and I was like I was like I don't want to write a hit I want to hang out with you and then she was like that sounds really good. And so and so then we wrote the song kind yeah. of with that concept in mind. And then I was like, I don't know who we should find a producer to produce it. And I was like, wait, you're a really good producer. So Michelle also produced it and engineered it. And we had a good friend do the mixing and I did the graphic design. Like it's just it's, it's totally your diary. It's what I want to do, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I produced the music video and it's been like Is it your dog in the video? It's my sister's dog. Okay. Yeah, Lana. It was a cute video. I First, I thought it was about the dog. I'm like, I don't have a dog, but I bet if I did, I would love to hang out with him. And then it was like a little love moment yeah. with Michelle. Very yeah. cute. Sweet and tender. It I is. wanted to have a little spin. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. You twist. did. You did that nicely. Thank you. Because I thought it was just about pets. <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> so what have you been up to lately? Because I know, I know you did the song, the Orlando tribute song, Hands. Yes. Yeah, yeah. A bunch of people were in that. Mm -hmm. I have to ask you, because we have been struggling with this on the air lately. It is so hard to be happy. And with everything going on, like, does that affect oh you gosh. as a person, as an artist? How do you, like, get through the day with all the bad news? I mean, I th that's something I'm really battling right now is mm -hmm. this idea of, like, okay, I'm doing this, like, self-promotion for this pop single that really, you know, as far as my past music, it's always had really strong messaging. And I'm looking at this song and I'm going, like, this is a pop song. There is no, like, subversive messaging in this. Is this tactless? Is this okay? Is there space for me to do this kind of work and to promote myself in this way? It does feel a little strange, but I do remind myself that, like, for as tactless as it feels, it's also something to be said for someone with my identity that, you know, I'm, you know, I'm bipolar, I'm a plus size woman, I'm gay, and releasing a pop song and being embraced the way that I have is inherently political and it is, is necessary. And mm -hmm. it, I think it is, um, it's important to continue doing good work, you mm -hmm. know? So I try to remind myself that, but it is a strange time and I kind of, I've been writing a lot and trying to see where I fit. Right. Yeah. No, we all are. I mean, we are on the air every day trying to make people laugh. And yeah. it's like, how can we make people laugh if we have to talk about another thing that happened in right. the news? Right. So it's hard, you know, and then you just, you do want to have fun at what you do. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you're, you're trying to battle all these different things going on and still be true to yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, there's so much work. To, I, I had a great conversation right with an awesome group of people last night that was just like, just to be in, in like, talking with other white people of like, how can we do better? Mm -hmm. What can we do to be better people and to influence other white people that we know that are like, you no know, narrow-minded or don't totally get the scope of what it, what's going on and that they're like what racial tension is and what privilege is and how can, how can we continually help the other people in our lives to check that mm -hmm. and I think having those conversations are really helpful and it even I, starts with a conversation. Absolutely. And I feel like I I wrote a little poem that I threw up yesterday and 
just making it a part of my dialogue, making it a part of my artistic identity to not shy away from things mm -hmm. that are scary. And mm -hmm. maybe I don't always know how to approach, you know, in the best way, but I'm, I'm like, it's, it's important to try yeah. because, you know, if you do what you've always done, you're going to get what you always got. And so I just think you're a philosopher that, girl, <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I think a lot, <laughs> <laughs> which can, al which can also be a yeah. double edged sword. Absolutely. I understand that process. <laughs> Actually, you know, I was watching a few interviews of yours and I was thinking like, cause you do so many things you do, you sing, you write, you compose, you're a poet, a new gardener. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> you have your Gardening. own garden. Yeah. I, well, have you ever considered like seminars for women? I think you would just be so amazing. Like I was listening to something you were talking about, about um, embracing your body and how, cause you know, everyone says just love yourself. And it's yeah. really, I roll my eyes too. It's like, yeah. it doesn't work like that. You yeah. grow up with, with um, patterns and stories that you've told yourself and things that you learn from your parents and things that you just assume. Mm -hmm. And it's work to untrain your brain and retrain it. Preach it. Yes. That's what I mean. But you mentioned that you yeah. mentioned some things that you've done to to kind of reprogram your own brain. Yeah. Ra I mean, rather than having public figures continually say like, just love yourself for who you are and you be proud. It's like it's not that easy. It's not mm -mm. tied up in a bow that way. It's dirty work. It's grimy. It's hard to love it yourself. Is, and it's work. It yeah. is work. And there's no like one point where you're like, OK, and now I'm now I get everything and now everything's wonderful and I accept right. all fully. You know, I'm still there's still aspects of, you know, whether it's my body or, or you know, aspects of my personality or my character or things I'm insecure about. Like I'm always going to be continually unpacking that. But it really did like there are really cool little hacks that people don't talk about that we really should talk about. Mm -hmm. And my, my, one of my favorite books right now is Shrill by Lindy West. Mm -hmm. And she has this bit where she's like, the best way we can sort of combat this like, this weird fat shaming world is just to see more fat people in media, <laughs> like to just like, see like be represented in some mm -hmm. way. Cause like, I, I remember looking at this, uh, there was a blog where this woman just took photos of women with back rolls and, and just rolls all over their bodies. And I, for as body positive as I am, I like, I like cringed. Like I was like, Oh God, how do they, how are they comfortable doing that? You know, like mm -hmm. for as much as I preach about it, I'm still very insecure about like certain aspects of my body and like they're being able to just continually see it and look at it and not be judgmental of it because of my internalized self hatred or whatever it is mm -hmm. like to slowly unpack it is so important. I think it, that's what will bring us together as well, because if we can be vulnerable and come to the table and say, these are, this is what I'm going through. These are my flaws. This is something I'm working through. Mm -hmm. You'll find that people will match you almost immediately. Keyword is vulnerability. Yeah. That's really the key. Yeah, absolutely. If you can open up about what you're insecure about. People feel mm -hmm. more comfortable with yeah. that, but it's scary to be the first one to do <sighs> it. And like, but that's been my prerogative since. I was gonna say, is since that I was your career, yeah, your life, that's my life. <laughs> Someone's gotta lead the pack. I don't know how to not. I think what it is, I don't think. I think that I'm still a child. <laughs> like, I just think that I'm not an adult, and I never became really jaded. Like, Thank actually, God, <laughs> I went to my. I'm, I'm working on a, on a other stuff on the album, so I'm working on a second single. And I was at my producer's house, and um, and. He was like, oh, you haven't met my daughter. She's two. She's really shy. She doesn't, she's never really interacted with anybody. She, we're actually kind of concerned about it. I was like, oh, okay. And of course, like, we had a conversation. Like, <laughs> like she you was met just eye like, eye. <laughs> we, I mean, he, he was like, I've never seen her this way before. I was like, I am actually yeah, two years old. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we get along. <laughs> That's great, though. You have to respect the child in here. Yeah, you really yes. do. Yeah. That's my way of being really irresponsible sometimes, too. Yeah. But whatever. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever. Um, I have to say one of your tweets because your tweets make us so happy. Really? Yeah, because you're just you. You yeah. don't you're not like Miss Self Promoter. You're you're you have you're proud of your work, which you yeah. absolutely should be. Mm -hmm. But you're also just you're like non sequitur thoughts. This is two days ago. All right, guy behind me. You want to play the kick my chair game during this five hour flight? Great news. I just ate hella beans and I have no shame. I mean, come on. I was like, she's my girl. She's my girl. Yeah. That drives me nuts, by the way. Yeah. Nuts. And well, at first, if it was a child, I'd be like, oh, okay. And I'm like, you're a grown ass man. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm just going to let her rip. Game the recognized whole time. game. Because uh, I was going to try to hold it in and make myself uncomfortable for five hours, but no. 
Not happening. Nope. He started it. Yep. <laughs> he started it. Yep. You started it. Now I'm just going to be Miss Farty Queen Fart. Whatever. You Queen don't... Fart. The title of my next album. <laughs> That's right. We come up with it on the spot. You heard it here. <laughs> so let's say you live in Massachusetts now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What is life like? I mean, are you, because I know you've had a little bit of a break to write. Mm -hmm. So are you going to plan on a tour? Are you going on any summer travel vacations coming up? Um, well, I'm doing a lot of promotion for the single this mm -hmm. month, and then next month is all really just focusing on the full-length album. Yes. And because um, the songs for the uh, EP that I'm planning on releasing are all done, it's just sort of like now just doing a lot of through composing for the album. Right. So the album is a it's a concept album, and it's about actually about shame, and it's called Shame Is an Ocean I Swim Across. And so there's a lot of classical composition through that kind of weaves throughout it and spoken word. It's weird, but I feel like it's beautiful. Like mm. I think that I, it feels a little strange to be promoting this like pop single, and I'm like, but the album is called Shame Is an Ocean I Swim Across. So well, like, you know what? That's all parts of you. You totally. know, like the single. Who can't relate to not wanting to do anything and just wanting to be with? Yeah someone and hang out <laughs> like that's so that's everybody can relate to that but then there's also deep parts of you yeah. that want to express other things absolutely I th that's something I've been exploring a lot is like the idea that we're all born complex and like multifaceted but we've been conditioned to believe that the best way to be loved and understood is to make yourself digestible and it just it's it's damaging and it, you're also if you start cutting off parts of yourself because you think that you'll be loved or understood that way, you live a half life. Mm -hmm. You don't live fully. And I feel like sometimes people look at me like, how are you so empowered? I'm like, I'm just really in touch with all of the parts that I am mm -hmm. and, and hoping that, you know, a trust falling into the world and having people meet me. Like it's honestly like the people around me have made my life so good, mm -hmm. you know, the communities that I've been a part of the, you know, the loved ones around me, like I'm, I, that's, that's who I am. Yeah. You know, well, you are what you attract. Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, you are kind of an ambassador for the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. We just had pride in San Francisco a couple weeks ago. Were you able to attend any pride celebrations? Um, I usually perform at them, so right. I don't like seek them out because I get booked for them and then I just enjoy them when I'm there. But actually it was pretty uh, intense because it was the first time I had sung She Keeps Me Warm after Orlando happened. And I was in uh, uh, Kentucky for Kentuckiana Pride. And it was crazy. I, as soon as we got off the plane, I got in the elevator and this guy, I just asked me and my assistant was like, you here for the gay thing? And I was like, oh, you mean the celebration of love and inclusivity for all people? <laughs> like, it was just like, of course I didn't say that. I was like, yes. <laughs> it's like all of my but witty comments are afterwards. But you thought it. But it was, I was just like, oh. I, you, we get so comfortable in our places and the world that we see around us and we forget that there's so many other things happening. And honestly, okay, I have a theory. I'm going to go on like five different tangents. Go but for it. The Facebook algorithm, I think, has really, in that model, we are being conditioned to seeing only what we want to see. And so when we hear of like, okay, they're... Th this is happening this whole other world where people are saying all of these things we've we've disconnected ourselves from it because it's uncomfortable and it hurts and it's exhausting but I, so when i got into kentucky i was like okay like i'm starting to see the things that i have felt uncomfortable seeing mm. and it's important to address it head on and so when i performed that day it was i couldn't get the words out it was i was just i cried through the entire thing and it was just hundreds of people hugging each other we all collectively just it was this it was this shame wash and it was like this complete moment of of healing and catharsis and necessary and having everybody sing it for me like it was just this moment of complete community it's almost like you being on stage seeing th how they feel about it it heals you too it was so healing and it was it was just like just a reminder of that what i do is not about my ego it's not about me look what i can do it's like how can i be a conduit for something good how can i be a vessel to to ignite something for somebody else what how can i best serve the world like that is my 
that's what I believe. And, Mm -hmm. and to be on that stage and have that moment where I wasn't, cause in my head I was like, I'm not going to be able to hold out the high note. I can't do it. I was like, it doesn't matter. That's not why you're here. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to be showy about this thing. And I get that. Like there's a place for all of that. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not bashing that in any way. I just know that that's not, that's not what I'm supposed to do. Mm -hmm. You know? No, we're all about getting messy. Yeah. Messy is good. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're excited for you. Today's the big day. It's not your birthday, but it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hang Out With You is the new single with your girlfriend in mm-hmm. it. And that you completely took control. This is your work, yeah. your voice, your everything. Yeah. And it's available right now on iTunes, I iTunes, believe. iTunes, yeah. And your website. And the website. Yeah, everywhere. Okay. Anywhere you go. Anywhere. Hopefully. She's all over the place, yeah. people. And follow her on Twitter and Instagram for the love of God. <laughs> Because she's hilarious. Uh, the website, Mary Lambert Sings. Mary Lambert, I adore you. Thank you so much. We adore you and can't wait to see you back. Thank you. I can't wait to come back. Yay.